Good afternoon. I am Dr. Nasinga Burton, founder and editor in chief of the Burton Wire. I'm here today on Black Press USA's Newswire to talk with my good friend, Dr. Mark Cunningham, about the life and legacy of Louis Gossett Jr., the first African American to win the Best Supporting Actor Oscar for his role in An Officer and a Gentleman. Welcome, Mark. Good to see you. Good to see you too. We uh, haven't done this in a very long time, so uh, we are excited. It's great to see you. Great to be talking about. The last time you saw me. Yes, you did. I said, "Look at you with the new looks. I love it and the glasses. You know, but you fly. You're a fly, brother. So we, we knew that was gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, <laughs> we are here today to talk about one of our favorite people, Mr. Lewis Gossett Jr. Um, I actually had the opportunity to work with him on a Cinematheque that I curated. Um, at Emory University when I was a professor of film and TV. I was co-director of the Film and Media Management Program and um, got an opportunity to know him. I was introduced to him by uh, the late, great Dr. Pella McDaniels, um, who was interested in acquiring his paper uh, for the Stuart A. Rose Collection, uh, which is at the Emory uh, University Library. So that's how we met. And um, he was a very um, interesting, highly intellectual, thoughtful uh, and of course talented person so mm -hmm. uh, you know he passed away on March 29th uh, he lived here actually in Georgia had a house here uh, his roots here in Georgia um, and so you know he will be missed so um, I just wanted to say that um, it was great knowing him um, uh, mm -hmm. before we get started into our conversation mm -hmm. okay all right so uh, Mark let's talk about mm -hmm. Mr. Gossett's legacy first of all mm -hmm. like before we get into that, actually, let's talk about our favorite kind of Lewis Gossett Jr. performances. Well, yeah, so for me, uh, probably, you know, I, you, was, you mentioned Officer and a Gentleman. It's probably one of the most obvious things that people would say in, in, in Roots, yes. or as my grandmother would say, Roots. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> about it. But, but my favorite uh, Gossett performances are some smaller things that he did. Uh, I would say smaller things. Uh, one of them uh, is his performance in Hal Ashby's movie, uh, The Landlord, uh, with Bo oh. Bridges and the late mm -hmm. Diana Sands. And he played Diana Sands' uh, love interest in that film. And of course, uh, she gets pregnant by Bo Bridges and he comes after him with an axe and, and all that. Stuff. But the, you know, the level of poignancy in that, right, that he goes from right, this kind of guy who apparently he's like wild and, you know, and getting ready to, you know, just kind of uncontrollable and, and kind of, you know, I hate to use the word brutish, but, you know, kind of it's what the appearances, but really the vulnerability that he shows once Diana says his character calms him down and and he could just do that, right? He could present the most, the, gr the gruffest of exterior, right? And then uh, immediately kind of take us to a place where a character is kind of beset by their insecurities and 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 uh, affected by their vulnerability, and he does that I think beautifully in that film. It's not a big part, uh, but he's he, he's very memorable I think in that part. And and then the other thing is his uh, my favorite appearance of his a, a couple appearances that he had on the TV show Good Times, and at once we one yes. right where he played. Uh, you know, the older love interest of, of Thelma, but my favorite is when he plays uh, Florida's brother, Uncle Wilbur, uh, and, and talks about the man the, the, with the balloon belly and the woman with <laughs> that sinus condition. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> right. absolutely. It was hilarious in that, right? And, mm -hmm. and, you know, of course, right, you know, he had the George Jefferson look when he played the love interest, but he was bald when he played <laughs> Thelma's brother. Yes, when he played Florida's yes. brother, rather. Uh, and and I wanted that sweater he had on with the belt with the belt book. I saw the word again recently. Uh, this time. Yeah, but he was so funny on that, and it just really even you know those favorite performances just a testament right to his talent and how he could easily kind of go in and out in these spaces. I mean, I mean we, we all know Louis Goss. I mean, he's a character actor for sure, but he could have been a movie star. Yeah, absolutely, oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I think people in a black community, for sure, he's a movie star. He's yes. a superstar, right? Yes. Because absolutely. we've seen him. You know, he had. Um, when I was uh, uh, working with him. 
I went back and watched a bunch of the stuff. Um, and even today I was watching this stuff and I watched it, uh, the episode of Family Guy where he uh, started as a drill sergeant um, uh-huh. when Brian went to the army. But um, just to hear his voice, you know, and, and how he kind of recreated his uh, role uh, from an officer and a gentleman uh, mm-hmm. as a drill sergeant in this particular entity. But yeah, he was um, super, super talented. And, you know, this is someone who started out um, in the theater, right? And so, you know, People don't like to say it now, hmm. but back then, um, that's how you you got your chops, right? Your acting chops, right? Hmm. You were in, um, you went to acting school of some sort. You know, sometimes it was at a major university or college. Other times it was a conservatory or some type of um, mm-hmm. uh, entity that you know focused on the arts or what have you. And then you you know got your chops from being uh, on Broadway or or off Broadway or um, in local theater, and so that's um, how he actually got started. And um, he's actually from uh, Brooklyn, uh, New York, and uh, his mother was a nurse and his father was a porter. So he didn't really come from, um, you know, at that time, even though, you know, it was still like, de- you know, de facto segregation everywhere. <laughs> no. um, and he has, uh, you know, his roots in, in, in Georgia and things of that nature. Um, he still had a, a pretty much middle class upbringing. Mm -hmm. Um, which he talked about, um, that was middle class for black folks. Mm -hmm. Um, And so he went to college um, on a basketball scholarship and a drama scholarship at NYU, uh, which a lot of people don't talk about, right? Um, So uh, we do know him with the uh, Negro um, Theater Ensemble, right? Um, Mm -hmm. Which a lot of folks, you know, Denzel Washington, Sidney Poitier, uh, Diana Sands, like a whole bunch of uh, people, Ruby D, Ozzy, Davis, um, you know, came out, some are founders, Mm -hmm. Sidney Poitier. and so we do know him from uh, that, you know, that type of training, but he actually is uh, a trained actor who studied yeah. his craft uh, and then was able to make use of it. Um, and his first role um, he had, because he actually went to school um, on, and I know this because, you know, he told me this and he said in interviews and stuff too, but um, he went to school on a basketball scholarship. So the first time he actually got to um, be on Broadway, he was the lead actor. Oh, wow. And he had never been in a play or anything. They oh, just wow. saw what he had mm-hmm. and they said, oh, he's magnetic. He can do this. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, he says he just didn't know enough to not to know that he shouldn't have been doing it. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, he, you know, he threw himself into it and the rest is history, uh, for lack of a better term. Mm-hmm. And so when you think about Mr. Gossett, one of the um, great things about him, right, um, out of his 482 per- appearances, wow. um, 482 appearances in television and film, um, and that does not include his work on Broadway, his group work mm. in local theater, his work overseas doesn't include any of that. Wow. Um, you know, to see that he was so prolific and that he gave so much of himself to whatever role he was in. You know, mm. one of the reasons we love Wilbur and we can we call him by name, <laughs> right, Wilbur, um, is because even in that episode, you know, in those twenty three minutes mm-hmm. uh, of Good Times, he basically owned that owned the, that uh, that screen. You he know, did. he was the star. You know, mm-hmm. he's playing opposite, you know, Esther Roll, right? This is after James John Amos, who's a great friend of his, mm-hmm. um, has left um, under, you know, uh, we say complicated circumstances. Yeah. And um, so, you know, they need a strong black figure to come in there and um, do some work until they figure out what they're going to do with that, you know, gaping hole in the storyline. And so they bring in Louis Gossett Jr., who fills it. Mm-hmm. Um, as as the uncle and uh, who is an advocate, uh, loves his nieces and nephews, and is a strong yeah. advocate for Michael in that episode. Yeah. So you know, w- one of the so things different from the other part that he played yes. earlier. I mean, completely yes. different. Yes, because when he was Thelma's older boyfriend, mm-hmm. um, that's when he had the George, yeah, the George Jefferson. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, he was very, you know, he was a, an older, esteemed, um, affluent. Um, you know, well um, manicured man. Yeah. You know? um, and so part of the lure, um, a lure for him or for Thelma was that he was who he was, right? Yeah. He was from a, a, an entrepreneurial family. They had generational wealth. They were well known in the, the hood. They had restaurants. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, JJ was like, marry him, marry him, marry him. Yeah. Get us out all, of the hood. You know? All the chicken we get, Elmo Knight. <laughs> that was his daddy. All the chicken, all the chicken, all the chicken we can eat. Okay, so you can see we're fanning out a little bit, y'all, but that is what it is, right? Um, and so when we think about him and how much he gives to himself and how much you can see, even in like if you just look at good times and you're like, let me look at these two performances, the range, you know, 
um, up from playing this, you know, sophisticated gent, so to speak, yeah. um, to then this like, you know, loud, um, you know, uh, great migration yeah. <laughs> from the roots he, of Mississippi. He looks, so younger. He looks yes. so much younger too. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so um, performances, you didn't say. Oh well, I mean, obviously, I love uh, Wilbur on uh, yep. Good Times, but mm -hmm. my um, I love him on Half and Leonard, um, which is a show oh, based yeah. on a, uh, a novella, um, mm -hmm. and it's set in the 1980s. And uh, he played the character of Bacon, and mm -hmm. um, I love this him on the show because I think Half and Leonard was very underrated. It had Michael um, Williams, K. Williams in it, the late great Michael K. Williams, who he also starred along with on uh, Boardwalk Empire. Um, he, yeah. but in Cap and Leonard, he plays um, there in this small town and is you know rife with racism and all the things. Um, and he plays the the hero, and you see Coleman Domingo in this particular shot because he's also uh, in the show, but you, he plays the hero um, who did not leave under duress, mm -hmm. right? So he starts out as a veterinarian and then, you know, people think he's just the cook or whatever, but he owns this restaurant. He doesn't leave when things get bad and when they're like on the brink of a, a race war. He's the one who stays and he's the one who actually helps Hap and Leonard navigate this particular space mm -hmm. um, and to survive, you know, what they're up against. Um, so I just love, love, love him in that particular show. I loved him in Watchmen. Um, you know, that's one of my favorites. Officer and Gentleman, obviously. Um, one of his favorites, though, was Enemy Mind. Uh -huh. Enemy Mind is interesting because Enemy Mind, um, I remember when we were curating the Cinematech, I didn't have Enemy Mind on my list because, you uh -huh. know, it's, it's an 80s film. It's a little bit, um, I would say campy, you know, uh -huh. from our perspective now. Um, I mean, you know, we love Dennis Quaid, The Night the Lights Went Out in Georgia. It's one of my all-time favorite performances. Oh, wow. Uh -huh. Yeah, I love Dennis Quaid. Like, Dennis Quaid is my is my dude. Um, and then, of course, Louis Gossett Jr. So, but it was a little campy. Um, it didn't do well at the box office. They had a lot of uh, issues behind the scenes, you know, directors leaving, new people coming in. Um, it was supposed to be shot here in uh, Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and then they moved it to Munich. So they had, like, a lot mm -hmm. going on with it. Um, and so I don't think it was as great of a film that it could have been. But thematically, it was very strong. And so he loved the film because he's like, I don't care that we spent $40 million on this film and it only made $12 million. So mm -hmm. He's like, I don't care um, that it was panned by the critics or whatever. He's like, this is one of my favorite films because it's about humanity. Mm -hmm. It's about learning how to coexist with mm -hmm. others. It's about understanding. And this was you know, part of his mantra, right? When you look at his interviews or if you talk to him, was that we have to work together in order to save humanity. Right. And that's really what Enemy Mind is about, right? Yeah. These two people um, who are mortal enemies they end up in a, uh, I won't tell you just in case you plan on watching it, but they end up on um, a, a, a planet, a place um, where they soon learn that they are both being hunted. They are the enemies, uh -huh. right? So they have to figure out how to work together. Um, and it, it becomes like really a classic buddy film with yeah. this alien, which is played by Gossett and mm -hmm. um, uh, Jeriba is his name. Mm -hmm. And then um, the Dennis Quaid character. Um, and so they have to learn how to work together, mm -hmm. and um, a lot goes on. I think what's um, most memorable about yeah. that is his yeah. character gets pregnant. Yes, by himself. <laughs> it has, <laughs> yes, it, it, it by himself has, and that's the thing, you know, <laughs> it's such a cult classic now, you know, people yes. really, really like that movie now, you know. And, yes. Uh, but yeah, I think that's the most memorable part. I remember seeing it when I was young and kind of going, uh -huh. like, yes. But it was really yes. cool to see him, you know, like you say, even though it does kind of, as, as you absolutely mentioned, kind of ventures into this kind of buddy, you know, film type situation. Uh, but it did give him a chance, right, to be in the, a lead spot like that in a, in a, in a major motion picture and, um, and really hold his own and create this kind of memorable character, right, to which there's arguably, uh, for him anyway, no, pre no real or no, certainly not a lot of precedent for Yes. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Character that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, the fact that they even cast him. Yes. Right. Right. Um, at that time period mm -hmm. um, when it's very unlikely that a black person would be cast cast in a science fiction film and would last as long as he did. Yes. <laughs> I, mean, right so, I mean, for real. <laughs> Right. So that was back in the day. Um, and it still happens a lot, actually. <laughs> but uh, unless Jordan Peele is making the film. Uh, but <laughs> uh, he, he um, 
yeah like you were out like if you made it through the credits you were good mm -hmm. um and so the fact that he was a, a leading character um the fact that he was able to um self they call the self-fertilization in the film mm -hmm. self-fertilize because they were able to determine their own legacies which was cool right. um and you know if you think about that from a thematic standpoint or you know even um anecdotal um mm -hmm. the idea of being able to determine your legacy when you are literally fighting people who are trying to enslave you which is hap happening in this film right mm -hmm. um is is a big deal um mm -hmm. and then even though he um you know he doesn't make it to the end of the film like uh mr yeah. quaid um his uh legacy does continue mm -hmm. um and so it's, a, it's just a really um interesting interesting film um and so i was glad that he brought that up i say all of that to say mm -hmm. i was glad that he brought that up because absolutely it was not on my list we did it uh, also with dr matthew bernstein um and you know uh Pelham. it was on none of our lists <laughs> For the cinema tech. So um, had he not asked for that movie specifically, we wouldn't have. And I probably wouldn't have watched it again. Um, mm. And I did. And then talking to him and understanding his perspective about it and what he was trying to do with the film and why it's one of his favorites. Mm. Um, it's become one of my favorites of his yeah. as well. And that's a, that's mm -hmm. a powerful, you know, when you think about it, like you say, from the vantage point, particularly of him being as a, you know, as a black actor and, 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 and just kind of like, even in the, you know, the 1980s, right, things were not, ideal. I mean, we weren't in the 80s, what, maybe 20 years removed from Jim Crow and 20 plus, you know, so years. Removed. Allegedly. Allegedly. Yes. <laughs> Allegedly so. uh, removed. Uh, but for, to, but for him to be able to play a character that determines their own legacy, right? Mm -hmm, uh, as a mm -hmm. black actor, right? Uh, you know, that to me, you know, that's pretty profound. And, and I could see why from that perspective, even the basis of humanity, right? that that would be one of his favorite roles because I think, right, that is something that I notice in all of the parts that Mr. Gossett played, mm -hmm. right? At that level of even like, you know, small shows he did, like the Alex Haley show, Palmerstown USA with with uh, uh, Michael J. Fox and yes, the things that he did like that, right? Where he, you know, the, the, the TV adaptation of Ernest Gaines, A Gathering Old Men, which is wonderful, that TV, yes. Shows, right? Yes. But seeing these characters, right, like you said, they're kind of, in, emboldened with this level with this humanity and that becomes their uh you know they're, they're kind of the sticking point right of what they're trying to do right as people i mean even even the drill instructor right in in uh yes. in, in in officer and a gentleman he you know he's doing his job and he's and he's being paid to make you know soldiers or whatever else but there is a level of humanity that's present in that part and it's the way mr gossett carries himself Right, even behind, if you think about enemy mind, even behind all of that makeup, the way that man carried himself is just, I mean, kind of the epitome of uh, black masculinity and 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 an artist for sure. Yeah, so, and Mark, you want to, you might want to remind our readers that you actually are a marine. I am. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I am. I keep forgetting. Yes, yes, you are. You are. You are uh, like a veteran. <laughs> A veteran, in, in addition to all your many other accolades, um, but you know, talk to us about um, you know that character uh, Foley, um, yeah. where he uh, was able to train these young men, and they were from all walks of life, right? Yeah. Um, in a way, in a way to make them more um, human and upstanding people, but through this very kind of terrorizing yeah. <laughs> type of experience, right? Um, you know, whether you want to call it hazing, uh, mm -hmm. you know, some, I went back through old reviews and some people were t calling it abuse. Yeah. Um, even back then, right now, mm -hmm. of course we call it abuse, but back then they were calling it abuse. Yeah. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about um, that character, um, what Mr. Gossett brought to that, what it means for Mr. Gossett to, Gossett to have brought that type of yeah. um, uh, character arc, because that character has an arc um uh, uh, uh to that character like how he played that character and where he led him from where he began and where he could have stayed but where he ended up can you talk a little right. bit about that too i think that's so true i mean it could have absolutely been one note i mean uh and you know look playing these for him to play you know this drill instructor type uh character or, or not type character to play this drill instructor character particularly a marine drill instructor right their goal is to break you down and rebuild you into a soldier because they're getting ready to send you off into a situation uh, that could very well be life or death, 
And mm -hmm. uh, you, you, you have to be trained in a, a certain way. You have to be addressed uh, a certain way. And at the time when you're in the midst of it, you don't get it. You think like, this is, dude, this, you know, what, you know, you say all <laughs> kinds of things, right? And, and and I'm looking at people on the outside, right? Never having been in that position, using the word abuse and things of that nature, right? But, you know, if you're caught by the enemy, right? And you're tortured, you have to be able to withstand that, right? You have to be able to uh, adapt to that environment. And that is what I think uh, uh, Foley is trying to teach mayonnaise, as he calls it. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Mayo, he's trying to teach uh, the Richard Gere character that. And he's and, and even the Lisa Eilbacher character, even though she's a woman, like he doesn't cut her any slack because it's like if you want to be in this space, right, then there are no special peerages, allowances. Like, these things have to, you know, and, 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 you know, have to happen. And he's not there to be their friend. And I think that comes through very much so in the film. It's not personal. Right. right? That is the job. And I think that's the distinction that uh mr gossett makes right that that is the job if this is what you say you want to do and also too i think particularly with mayo right he saw something in him right and he mm -hmm. knew that he you know that moment i remember he was putting off the you know almost drowning him with the with the hole <laughs> and he tells him he doesn't have you know and though and, and then the moment too in the, with the the you know the the sit-ups and all that you know i don't have anywhere else to go he tells him and i think he understood that and he knew that well if you don't have anywhere else to go then you got to make something out of this Mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. that came through in, in, the, in that character, absolutely, because what could be read on the surface is him just kind of being this hard, you know, hard, you know, uh, kind of drilling short to carry, which is what he's supposed to be, that, that humanity, again, comes through there, because, uh, you know, I believe the Foley character knew there was something to that, you know, man, this is a man who, you know, I'm inferring from the film, who's made a lot of soldiers, who's seen a mm -hmm. lot of come through there and seen a lot of people that's not being able to make it and he pushed that guy to his absolute limit and that guy was able to withstand that and so and yeah and, and yeah. even in the film he doesn't go home no foley doesn't go home he lives on the base right he lives on the base. um and so i think that's interesting too in terms of not having anywhere to go because foley in fact never leaves like yeah. that's his goal in life is to make more soldiers. Do mm -hmm. you see them go off even when they, you know, graduate to the next level? Right. Some people are leaving, some people are staying or whatever. He goes right back to that same uh, a unit where mm -hmm. he was staying and came out of um, in the very beginning, like from mm -hmm. the beginning of the movie to the end is a first, uh, full circle moment. Yeah. So I think um, part of the, the connection between the two is also that, you know, Foley sees some of himself in that, him. Yeah. And I think that's the point um, that uh, Mr. Gossett has been trying to make, you know, not only through his performances, but also, you know, his organization, E-Racism right. um, and his activism around, um, mm -hmm. you know, people coming together uh, is that you have to be able to see yourself in other people in order to have full humanity and when you can't right. see other people's humanity then you're you're not human yourself like you're not right uh, you're not reaching your full humanity or potential either as a human right. being and i think also, um, oh, I was gonna say in those spaces too mm -hmm. uh you know in the when you're in the in, in a situation like the military i know from my own personal experience and i'm even looking at the kind of you know the makeup of the soldiers in the film and then here you have in 1983 right mm -hmm. hey i went to boot camp in 1988 I was 17 years old, and uh, I, 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 one of the things I was surprised by is I had, you know, my, my lead drill instructor was a white man, but the two junior drill instructors were black men, brothers. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. That's Sergeant Johnson and that's Sergeant Williams. Never forget, and Star Sergeant Carrington, the guy, because our name, his name was Mark Carrington, and he used to tell me, you can't you change your name. Anyway, but, <laughs> but, but I saw a lot of Foley uh, or rather, I saw a lot of Staff Sergeant Johnson and Staff Sergeant Williams in Foley, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And race never, even though race, I, you know, we're not saying that race, race just doesn't exist. Yeah, they, because they used to say dark green Marines and light green Marines. That's how they used to differentiate between us. He was, you described mm -hmm. somebody, he was a light green Marine. He was like, they, they, you know, they race was still there. But mm -hmm. when you're training people to be soldiers, to be in life and death situations, that's not anything that gets dwelled on. Mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe a lesser film uh, in that case, uh, you know, to I think what Douglas Day Stewart wrote it and, and, and Taylor Hackford is the director. Mm -hmm. yep, right. Taylor uh, Hackford. Yeah. You know, so to that extent, right, that a lesser film could have used that to say I'll put race in there to make it like that's not what it's about. 
when you're mm-hmm. in the military, it is about the fact that, you know, I was in the military with guys who had, who came from the like, smallest towns in Louisiana, probably never dealt with any black people, but that's the person you're in the foxhole with. And so, you know, I think, you know, to, to you know, Mr. Gossett's, you know, kind of activist work outside of uh, what he did as an actor and certainly the what he infused in, and his characters as an actor, you know, though, I, I hear you on that, like being able to see somebody beyond all of that, the humanity of it all, right? Uh, comes through. And I think that comes through in that performance as well, too, right? That, yes, I'm a black man in this position, whatever, but that's not what it's about. I am your superior. I am making you into, you know, you are a representation of me. I'm training, Mm -hmm. right? (laughs) Right, right. That that comes through very strong uh, in that film. But I do admit, right, as a young black man, as a, you know, at the time, I think when Austin Jumper came out, I was 12, 13 years old around that time. And I do remember being quite impressed by the fact that it was a brother in charge. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. I understood all that. I remember being very like, wow, like that. Yeah. A brother in charge. Really, uh, that really struck me. And really, even though, like, again, that's not, as we were just talking about, not really the intent of uh, what Mr. Gossett is doing there. Uh you know, in terms, particularly in terms of the part that he's playing and, and what that milieu is like, uh, still, as a, you know, as I'm sure, you know, as a young black person watching that, somebody com- with that much command and that much authority on screen and to be a black man and, and don't, you know, not getting to see that very often, that meant a lot to me to see him in that part. Even if he, if I did go like, oh, he's so mean, or like, you know, at the time, but still, I like that. I liked it. <laughs> Yeah. Right. When we think about, um, you know, Lewis Gossett and, you know, um, you know, racism um, and his organization of racism and you'll see him and you'll see other people like um, I think Courtney B. Vance, I saw an old uh, interview with him in it and uh, he had on a racism hat. Mm-hmm. But um, what's interesting about um, Mr. Gossett is, you know, he it, it, when he talks about his childhood and growing mm-hmm. up in Brooklyn, he talks about how um he grew up with all types of people all types of people Mm -hmm. um and um he had friends from all walks of life you know lots of different people and different neighbor uh, in the neighborhood his neighborhood was mixed and things of that nature and Mm -hmm. so for a very long time he didn't really um subscribe to the notion that racism uh was real um because he hadn't really experienced it in the way that he had read about it Mm -hmm. right and and learned about it and Mm -hmm. seen it in other places um and um you know uh, of course it's very problematic coming from a black man (laughs) but he says um he learned um you know not only through the characters that he played but also because you know when he first got to hollywood and they had laid out the red carpet for him and he was in beverly hills and they were treating him like a king um he got um pulled over by the police and was uh, handcuffed to a tree for two hours and um um and it was really only because he was black and that was like kind of like that aha moment for him right i mean he left you know his safe space of of brooklyn you know wherever neighborhood he was in brooklyn where he felt safe and where he had friends and people of all different classes and backgrounds and they all went to school together and lived together and and lived peacefully amongst one Mm -hmm. another um he was able he understood at that moment um, what everybody else had been t- uh, talking about and had been experiencing. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when we think about um, his characters and bringing that um, humanity to the, full humanity to the characters and how, I would say in some cases, you know, like you said with um, Foley, uh, he transcends race um, in the mm-hmm. particular character. Um, I think it's uh, interesting that in, later on in his career, you know, whether we talk about Watchmen, whether mm-hmm. we talk about Half and Leonard, uh, when we talk about the color purple, uh, which I was so happy to see him in that, um, the the remake. Yeah. Um, whether we talk about any of, of those things um, that you see it so um, starkly represented um, in those later uh, types of films that he's a part of, you know? Yeah, I mean, he, I think, you know, it's so funny he kind of mentions that, having that aha moment in, in California, because, you know, it's one of the things I impart to my students, right, that it's not the kind of thing you don't, you know, he doesn't walk around with, a, even though his face, facial recognition, you know, much later, mm-hmm. it would, but, you know, you know, he doesn't walk around with a sign on saying I'm Lewis Gossett Jr. Like that, that doesn't, 
and there are people who probably looked at him, those officers who looked at him and didn't care that he was Louis Gossett Jr. You know, like that, mm -hmm. that, that, that becomes a thing. Like you, you, you never kind of, you know, you don't, you don't get past that. You know, it's very difficult to get past that. And uh, I had a similar kind of, I wasn't handcuffed to a tree. Uh, but when I was, I remember like after film school going uh, to Hollywood and trying to make it and having a similar experience with the police right after uh, the Rodney King riots that happened. And it was, you know, in addition to being, you know, frightening, honestly, uh, it was disheartening too, right? And you, and, and but, but then you realize, like, this is the way that it is, no matter what you accomplish and what you achieve, right? Uh, that people are not unable to do what Mr. Gossett uh, was such a proponent of, which is looking beyond uh, those things, uh, color and things of that race, and seeing the humanity in somebody. Uh, yeah, I mean, the mission of racism is to contribute to the creation of a society where racism does not exist, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so part of that, and, you know, I think they talk about it a lot in conflict studies, um, I think cultural studies and things of that nature, is the only way to actually get to that point is that you have to do the conflict, right? You have to go mm -hmm. through, <laughs> the, yeah. uh, deal with the reality that racism does exist, it's systemic, it's structural, or what have you. So this uh, idea of just having this kind of colorblind society where we just don't mm -hmm. see race right. um building these kind of color blast uh colorblind casts uh, which our friend Kristen talks about uh beautifully um mm -hmm. in her books um um but having these colorblind cast uh works at a certain level right it, it works at a symbolic mm -hmm. level for sure um but ultimately um at the end of the day in order to eradicate a socially constructed um system of power which is racism mm -hmm. is about uh, you have to address it full on and head on and acknowledge its presence yeah. um, and its role in society and its role in creating these kind of categories um, that continue to, to drive the conflict um, when they are not uh, teased out or explored or discussed or understood uh, in meaningful and thoughtful ways. Yeah. So um, I think that part of his um, legacy is often, is, is definitely, um, you know, the, in the way that he played the roles that he played, even um, I'm having a brain fart. Uh, Roots, uh, yeah. his character Roots, uh, Fiddler. 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 Fiddler, yeah, Fiddler. Um, but when he was in Roots, and he is, you know, and he hated this movie. This is what he told really? me. <laughs> really? No, he hated it at first. Yeah, because he oh. didn't want to play an Uncle Tom. Oh, right. And he was like, they got me in the you know most uh, important movie, you know, TV movie of all time. And I'm playing the sellout, you know, like <laughs> he said he was hot about that thing. <laughs> but he took it because it was the most important movie, yeah. right? And then he wins an Emmy of, for it, right? <laughs> yeah, he wins an Emmy for it. But he said he finally playing that character and learning more about that character. Mm -hmm. He didn't believe that there are uh, Uncle Toms. He oh, believes wow. that people have to make decisions in the moments in which they live in order to survive. Wow. Right. And so um, if you're making those decisions so yeah. that you survive and another generation of people survive behind you, mm -hmm. then he thinks it's the right decision. Right. That's a good right. Um, and so I thought that was a really interesting uh, read on that character uh, mm -hmm. because so many people, I mean, even today, they're like, oh, yeah, you know, it's like Stephen from Django. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. You know, like just synonymous with when yeah. you say Uncle Tom or when you say, you know, um, you know, you know, the master's uh, tool or, yeah. you know, his man Friday or whatever, yeah. you know, there's just certain characters that come to mind immediately. Yeah. And Fiddler, I think, is one of them, particularly from that generation of television and film. So, um, but what's interesting is his take on that, yeah. uh, on that character. Mm -hmm. Do you think Mr. Gossett is probably more well known for playing Fiddler than, say, playing uh, Foley in Officer and the Gentleman? No. No, mm -hmm. really? Really? Mm -hmm. I think for black people, I mean, and I can't speak for the whole black race. We are yeah. that diverse and real big. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I'll say this for black people. I know mm -hmm. um, probably for Fiddler, particularly of a certain age. Mm -hmm. So I was like older black folks, older than us, because, you know, yeah. <clears throat> I, text I text my, I text my uh, <laughs> friend of mine when it happened. I said, oh, my God, Louis got junior pass. And she went, oh, Fiddler is gone. Oh, my <laughs> Immediately, yes. that's what she wrote back. Yes. Oh, fiddler is gone. I'm like, 
you know, but yeah, I mean, yeah. But that's a black thing too, because yeah. as I was getting texts as, and phone calls too, and I, I mean, I'm not laughing at the fact he's gone for uh-huh. sure. Right. I'm laughing at the fact that most black people who said something called him by some character. Yes, they did. Right, right. So they true. didn't say Mr. Gossett is gone. Oh my God, Mr. G- One of my friends, Okita, she said Mr. Gossett. You know, she's, uh-huh. she's well raised. <laughs> she's well raised. <laughs> Everybody else. <is. laughs> But she was like, oh, I just wanted to let you know Mr. Guy said his past. I hope you're okay. Right? right. You know, I got that. But other yeah. than her, it was like, Finla, Foley, uh-huh. make it. You know, like they were just like every day. And I was like, that is a true, I mean, he's bigger than a character actor in my mind. Yeah, right? He's really, right. He's a lion. He's a lion, right? Mm-hmm. He's a he's a legend. The fact that he can play opposite Sidney Poitier and and uh, Ruby D uh-huh. and uh, Diana Sands, all the other Ruby folks. Neal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, you know, demonstrates that. But yeah. the fact that people call him by his characters yeah. because he gives so much to those particular roles is, um, mm-hmm. you know, I think a testament to what he does, what he did uh, right. in his particular role and what he put into them. That's how you know um, you made it sure. with black people. Well, you know, you know you know, made it with black people as an actor when they don't call you by your name, they call you, like, instead of saying sister, sister, oh, I'm watching T and Tamara. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know, yes, we, yes. You know, if black people are calling you by your character, you made it. You have made right. it. You right, know? right, right, yeah, right. because I think somebody... Because I had not forgotten that he was in Watchmen. That was the cover for our cinema right. tech. Mm-hmm. Um, but I didn't know if other people, because Watchmen was so good. Um, yeah, good. But I didn't know if other people thought about him relative to Watchmen. Mm-hmm. You know, because when we did it, Watchmen was hot, right? It was out. Oh, uh, it was, we thought it was going to get another season, but that's another yeah. story for another day. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when we did it, um, you know, it was like, oh, you know, he played Will Reeves, right? Mm-hmm. Um, in that particular film. So I remember somebody said, Oh my God, Will Reeves from Watchmen. You know, like mm-hmm. um just the fact that people just and and for 482 performances. Wow. Right to the right? end of his life, right? To the end of his right life. To the end of his life, right. Like. Yes. I mean, that's amazing. And that he worked. So this is the other thing, because we gotta talk about this too. Work mm-hmm. ethic. Yes. <laughs> Work ethic. So I yes. feel like, first of all, uh, Mr. Gossett challenges this notion that American actors are not, Black American actors aren't trained, which is why they're not cast. That is BS. Very Having much. gone to, to four art schools, um, I don't know any Black actors who aren't trained. <laughs> I don't some know kind, any. Some kind of way. Yes. Um, so, Formally or informally. They tra- it is. They're, yes, they're trained, yes. If they so you go into good. the... Yeah. Yeah, we don't call them Rolodexes anymore, but you go into your phone contact list, all the mm-hmm. actors who are in there that I've known over the years were trained. Even mm-hmm. if they went to, let's say, Northwestern for undergrad, they went right. to NYU or USC mm-hmm. or whatever, uh, for or overseas uh, for additional, or yeah, yeah, actors, yeah uh, uh, for additional training. Yes. So I think, um, I love that he really challenges that notion um, and represents black actors in mm-hmm. that way, right? It's not only is he a trained actor, not only he have to learn quickly? Mm. Um, and he was so good, he was able to get roles. Like his teachers were like, Oh, you should be on Broadway now. Let me just go ahead and call him <laughs> right. and, and hook this up. I know you're only 17, you know, yeah. 15. I think he was 15 for his first uh, right. uh, Broadway role. But I know, I know you're only 15, but uh, you know, we, we're gonna hook this up, yeah. you know. Um, and that he had the type of work ethic where he literally was working up until the day he passed. Um, mm-hmm. It's crazy. It is. I mean, you know, and that's one of the things I lament. Right. As, as, as somebody who loves film and a film scholar and you know loves TV and all of this other loves media uh, the way that I do. One of the things I lament with somebody like Mr. Gossett, who had that whose talent was that prodigious. Right. And, mm-hmm. and so many other actors. One of the things I lament about the fact is that they never, in my mind, got a chance to show the talent they really had. Right. And you think about that work ethic because they never and they didn't get to show it because they weren't given the parts. Right. For what you like for like what you said, whether it be oh they're not really trained or they're not or they don't look like a league man, whatever. And let, let's be for real. Mr. Gossett was sexy in uh, Officer and the Gentleman. He yes, was he was. He was. He took that shirt <laughs> off the fight. Maybe I saw, oh, yeah, you know, he was muscled up and everything. You know, these, you know, everybody not surprised. Oh, Ernie Hudson was These brothers been looking good. Like, this is not, you know, 
I'm using these and could have absolutely right <laughs> played those parts and, and and done those things. And I just kind of I think some of that work ethic, you know, and some of the reason, like I think about Cicely Tyson, right, and Russell, mm -hmm. that like, working up until their last days is because of I think there I felt like I always felt like that they always thought like I got something else to do. There's something else I can show. There's something else I can prove because throughout the, it is illustrious as their careers were right never having those moments right consistently having those moments where they got to play those kind of person i think maybe i'm just you know that's why enemy mine in some ways is so important to mr gossett right because that was a chance right like you say even though he didn't make it to the end that he had the opportunity to go toe to toe right and and and, and be the kind of focal point of that film and that, that that's the thing that kind of saddens me when i see uh our champions like mr gossip you know transition is artistically i don't feel like we ever really got to see everything they were capable of because of you know the obstacles that were put in their way oh yeah absolutely and for him to do what he did in spite of those obstacles is crazy like it's it's amazing that you know he has been on so many television shows so many and that he wasn't above it because that's the other thing i think right. um generationally people don't understand like there was the theater Mm -hmm. <laughs> let's mm -hmm. explain this it was a theater and then film was like that little um medium that came along that was for mm -hmm. the masses because the theater was not for the masses right right um and so the theater was where you really uh were talented and if mm -hmm. you had the ability to work in the theater you yeah. did not work in television right? right so and you see that across uh you know especially in the 80s that's when you right. see a lot of people who um were theater folk right they brought right. away their whole lives and then they transition into um, television because mm -hmm. they want to work, right? Because they yeah, age they out of, right. of the theater, right? Because mm -hmm. that's grueling, that's rigorous in a very specific way. Not that TV isn't, TV is too, but yeah. it's just different. Um, and so they transition. So you see them on these like nighttime soap operas and, and things of that nature. Um, but Mr. Gossett, he was, he just did what he liked. Like, yeah. he, you know, almost like uh, I would say Denzel and Viola Davis now, mm -hmm. um, right? Where they're just like, oh, of course, I'm going to do this uh, this Broadway play. Of course, I'm going to do Fences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course, I'm going to do that. Right? Um, and then I'm going to go and shoot The Equalizer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> right? Yeah. And then I'm going to go shoot this TV show, um, yeah. this ABC TV show, or I'm going to do this streaming uh, 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 television show mm -hmm. uh, on uh, the streamer on Netflix. Right. Um, Mr. Gossett was already doing that. You know, yeah. like he didn't have that type of ego. Um Mm -hmm. Where he was like, well, I'm a theater person, you know, and I think a raisin in the sun is probably one of the most amazing stories ever written mm -hmm. that then made its way, um, you know, onto film mm -hmm. and then eventually was shown all over television and yeah. then has been remade multiple times. But I think um, in terms of showing that you can go from uh, really from a, a book <laughs> to a right. to uh you know a play <laughs> to uh, -huh. uh a television film, and that it doesn't TV show yeah to film. right it doesn't take anything away from the work if the work is great um mm -hmm. and the artists you know whether we talk about the actors yeah. are great it doesn't matter uh if they're doing it for on theater or if they're doing it in film or if they're doing right. it in television it's yeah. just that the work is great yeah, and I think you know. I even think about people like you know. You mentioned you know, but like Ellen Holly and mm -hmm. and Al Freeman Jr. Right, like people mm -hmm. who, who were doing you know daytime television, even right, like doing daytime soaps and stuff like that. You know, because like you said again, they wanted to work right, and that work ethic that work ethic says right. Okay, if I want to work, then I can't turn this down, right? And and you and I both know, right? They played parts that we could argue were beneath their talent. Right. We could we could we, we could argue that. Absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. You know, but they infused it with something that made the character that they you know, they were able to infuse those characters with something that made them leap off of the page. Or like you said, again, to go back to Mr. Uh Gossett's uh you know, thoughts about humanity infusing those characters that that's a testament to their talent, right? And a testament mm -hmm. and a testament to that work ethic that you mentioned. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And um, when I'm, I'm thinking about Mr. Gossett, the question I have for you is, mm. who do you think, you know, who's his legacy in the entertainment world? Like, oh, who do wow. you think is is next up based on what he has done in his career? I would say, and this is me being a little bit biased because this is my favorite actor, uh, but the kind of chameleonic way, chameleonic way that 
uh, I think Mr. Gossett was able to kind of move in and out of spaces. My man, uh, Jeffrey Wright. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely oh, yeah. A, uh, a a part of that legacy. Mr. 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 Coleman Domingo uh, yes. has that because Mr. Domingo, right, very much so stature like Mr. Gossett has that same. Yes, stature, I think. Right. <laughs> you know, all of that. I mean, I, th I think those brothers really uh, because, you know, we know Mr. Washington is Mr. Poitier, you know, that that, right, right, that right, has right. already been determined. But Mr. Gossett, yes. I would say Coleman Domingo and, and, and a Jeffrey Wright. Uh, yes. Would his, those would be his legacies. Yeah. And I would have said up until a few months ago, uh, Jonathan Majors. Oh, too, absolutely. His, yes. Um, his ability and uh, his ability to just become whatever character he is playing yeah. um and to move in so many different ways and to like you know do a marvel movie and to yeah. do a, a, a an hbo series and right. to uh you know do a film with glenn Plummer um mm -hmm. uh, uh, that looked a lot better <laughs> and was a lot better um yeah. Um, than the re uh, the reboot, although I like the two of Tom Cruise's Top Gun. Um, but you, yeah. like Yaya, uh, Yaya Abdul uh, Martin. The yes, yes. Oh my God. Yes, absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, but like, yeah, these brothers who are out here and they are killing it wherever they go. Like yeah. whatever role they're in, um, you know, what it doesn't matter if it's a TV movie, it doesn't matter if it's a, a motion picture film, it doesn't matter if it's a TV series, web series. Mm -hmm. Um, they are out, out here killing it. Um, it, it. And so I think you're right on with that. You know, and I think also too, and I don't mean to, I hope this doesn't come across bad because this is certainly not my intent, you know, intent. But aside from Mr. Wright, uh, my man, Jeffrey, uh, man, it's good to see these dark skinned brothers being the lead in these movies. And, yes. and, and it's good to see these dark skinned brothers you know, be noticed for their magnetism, their sexiness, their charm. Now, I don't mind saying the brother is sexy. These brothers are sexy. They are. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they, 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 these brothers are, man. And and for that, <laughs> and for that to come out on screen the way that it does, like, and and the way that, like, I think about the way Coleman Domingo carried himself on that red carpet. Yes. That season. You know, and 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 to be able to move in and out of those spaces, I think that is very much so something that uh, Mr. Gossett laid the foundation and the groundwork for. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think you, you hit it uh, the, the nail on the head uh, for sure. Um, when we think, you know, you know, call it the Idris Elba effect, whatever effect it is. <laughs> uh -huh. Right, right, whatever um, it is. Yes, yes, yes. That we see these brothers who were previously, you know, with the exception of Sidney Poitier, and Poitier was a leading actor, but he was also asexual, yes. right, in his presentations. He was very much a sanitized version of mm -hmm. whatever, you know, character he was playing. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, uh, although there are some portrayals, uh, some films that he definitely challenges that notion, but uh, mo overall, um, in terms of his presentations, he mm -hmm. was um, definitely. Um, made uh palatable to the uh, mainstream audiences mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right and i feel like um mr gossett um was not necessarily and i think these brothers who are coming up now they can play and be anybody right yeah. be any character mm -hmm. um and that they don't have to necessarily be palatable and they are whole like they mm -hmm. fall in love you know they um they are loving and kind and you yeah. know brutal and violent and all the yeah, things all in between. Things. Yes. Um, and I definitely think Mr. Gossett has something to do with that. Cause yeah. I think with his characters, he's always finding like, you know, when you, when you watch his work, the difference between him and other people who shall remain nameless is that he could always play those characters like this, even and flat. Yeah. Cause most characters are written even and mm -hmm. flat. They are, yeah, right. Especially for black people in exactly. general, black men and women specifically. Right, they're right? very much so no, not round characters at all. Right, so they're very so it's easy to play, to just you know I don't know dial it in or just go ahead and just mm -hmm. play the character as written. And we know that there's some nuance to that. You know, if you have a director who lets you go off script or not, or a director mm -hmm. might want you to do certain things or what have you. The writer might say, no, 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 but this character is this way. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, Doc, uh, um, Mr. Gossett and Dennis Quaid actually fought over the type of uh, over how their characters were portrayed and the oh, stories, uh -huh. um, which which is interesting too. But 
the point is, um, when we think about think about that, um, I think you have to give it up to to Mr. Gossett, right? In terms of owning all of uh, who he was um, right. in those characters and taking them from that kind of flat character that we're used to seeing mm-hmm. um, that doesn't have nuance, it doesn't have context, right. it doesn't have any of that, and kind of bringing that in, very much bringing that in mm-hmm. through the performance. Right. Right. Um, even if they're, you know, the character arc isn't as, uh, blatant, uh, even if we don't, if we're not supposed to have it, he does that. Right, right, right. That's like, I think that's, yeah, that's a really, really good point because, you know, and I, and I, and I hope, right. Uh, and I'm so glad, uh, you know, you asked me to have this conversation with you because, you know, I, I wonder sometimes about, you know, how people will remember Mr. Gossett and people like, you know, because I know everybody talks about Sidney Poitier and, and, and he gets mentioned in, in our classes and, and particularly, you know, as, as, you know, kind of his contribution before the kind of, you know, the onslaught, if you will, of black nationalism in films came in the black exploitation era, but he kind of gets mentioned as that kind of bridge, right, to these better parts for black people. And then, but then there are these actors like Mr. Gossett, right, who have, you know, contributed just as much and, and don't always get, their flowers as this being said right now. And that's why I loved so much on the set of that, of the color purple, where there was that uh, video of Mr. of Coleman Domingo taking Mr. Gossett by the hand and Fantasia singing that song to him. And I could see on his face what that meant to him. And he deserved that. He honestly deserved that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, there are people we think about, um, I mean, Lawrence Fishburne comes to mind and, yes. and, you know, lots of different folks who've just done amazing work consistently yeah, over the right. years. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. And um, I think that he really is the barometer for that. Like he is yeah. the person who, um, to me, at least, best models, you know, not only that training, getting your training in, mm-hmm. um, that work ethic, um, being a part of the community. You know, not just being a star or a celebrity, but like putting something into the community, creating other actors, opportunities for people to learn uh, from the community, to learn um, the craft, to have access to all of the things that a lot of folks didn't have access to, um, which is something that uh, Mr. Gossett was doing as well. Um, And then just giving of himself, even the Cinematheque, you know, like just the willingness to, because it was like COVID, post COVID, it was. Uh, I remember the first day the weather was horrible <laughs> mm-hmm. and it was pouring down rain. And all I could think of, I said, how old is Mr. Guy? I said, I don't think he should be out mm-hmm. in this rain. Like, uh-huh. I really don't. <laughs> you know, like in my head, like I'm feeling guilty. Like, oh my God, uh-huh. I got this, this icon out in the rain. Like, uh-huh. how is this going to work? But I mean, he did it. Like he just, mm-hmm. they did it. He kept moving. Um, yeah. And so I think that that is just a kind of a testament to who he was. Like, you know, he, and then he actually got sick, you know, uh, mm-hmm. from being out in the rain. Uh-huh. But he still like called in, and I remember I was like, oh, he's probably not gonna call in. I, I would be mad if I did this thing mm-hmm. and, <laughs> and I'm sick or whatever. I said, so I don't know. So I remember up until the moment, because uh, he was gonna be at not all of them, but many of the screening. Mm-hmm. Uh, up until the moment we started, and then it was like that light came on, and I was like, oh my god, like it's Mister Gossett. Yeah, like he right. does not fail. Like he does not stop. Yeah. Uh, but he was like in his little bed, and he was propped up. Mm-hmm. Right, he was propped up, yeah. and um, he was still there. He was there, and he was talking, and um, you know, uh, giving us everything we wanted, and answering all the questions, and setting mm-hmm. up the film, and doing all the things. So that's what um, you know, I think is is part of his legacy too. Like just yeah, yeah just going, like continue, and not in a you know working himself to death kind of way. I'm not saying mm-hmm. that. I think every role that he wanted to do, he mm-hmm. did, and he gave it his all. Everything he wanted to do in life. Yeah. He did, and he gave it his all. You know, yeah. I, one more person I would mention also as part of his legacy is too. I don't want Brian Tyree Henry. I think also too is part of that. Like, cause they they remind me kind of playing those parts, right? And you know, and 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 being in those spaces like that. But yeah, yeah, that, I think that's a testament to that work ethic you were talking about, right? That you know, and and the old adage, right? That the show must go on, right? And Absolutely. The show must be on. That. He embodies yeah. that. He absolutely does. Mm-hmm. So um, we have about five more minutes, mm-hmm. maybe not. I think it's more like four minutes. Um, but I kind of want to close with, um, you know, a really a discussion or just a brief discussion about what he means to the historical trajectory of Black 
blacks in Hollywood, yeah. right? Um, because he is someone who was able to transgress those boundaries. Like he was in lots of different types of programs, but you know, um, he really worked. Most of his work was in Hollywood, right? Um, and so, you know, what does it mean for someone, uh, particularly of his age, and his ability to work in Hollywood? Yeah. as a black actor for as long as he did. I, I think it's something that can easily be taken for granted, right? Because I think he is a performer that people can easily take for granted because he's so consistently good all the time, you know, every time you see him. But I think mm -hmm. from a legacy standpoint, there is something to be said about the fact that he is the first black actor to win the Best Supporting Actor Oscar. There's something to be said for that. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think that that is something, and, and that's an iconic character that he created. I'm sorry, when you think about Officer and the Gentleman, I think he comes to mind first. I honestly do. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and, and so I think, you know, even with Roots and all this, there are, there are ways, right, that he has, uh, you know, kind of really kind of broke through those barriers that are present in Hollywood and kind of put himself in a position where we can forever have him kind of etched on the Mount Rushmore. Of black <laughs> I yeah. love it on the Mount Rushmore black actors. Yes, 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 yes. So um, when we think about Mr. Gossett um, and his legacy of, um, you know, as an actor, um, as an activist, mm -hmm. um, and even if you don't agree with, because you know me, I'm, I'm a little like, and we talked about it, you know, uh -huh. um, I was like, mm, <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, but hey, I'm in, I'm interested and I understood his perspective and mm -hmm. I understand what he was trying to do and I respect and appreciate mm -hmm. what he's trying to do um, through a racism, which I think is a very important um, organization. And if nothing else, I think it started a lot of conversations that needed to be had that people weren't previously having mm -hmm. um, in particular in, in a very particular sorts of spaces too, you know, um, because he traveled all over the country, all over the world. Um, through his uh, organization and uh, spoke at a lot of colleges and universities um, and um, really was trying to uh, make a difference in the way that he thought was a good way to make a difference. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, when we have his activism, um, when we have, um, you know, his body of work, a lot of times people don't really think about that when we think mm -hmm. about award shows. Um, because I was like, he only has, what, an, an Emmy and an Oscar? Well, how is this possible? <laughs> <laughs> right? I was like, what? 482 performances. Like, mm -hmm. I know like 300 of them were like outstanding. <laughs> I, exactly. At least. At least, at least 300. Right? And, the rest least of them, and the rest of them were good. <laughs> right, right, right. So I was like, how is this possible? Mm -hmm. um, you know, doing my research uh, for this particular show. But um, when we think about his body of work, right? Because a lot of times when, um, you know, we do award shows and uh, people are like, how did they get that? They, that, you know, that movie's not even their best movie. And it's like, well, they probably were thinking about their body of work, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, they probably should have won like for Malcolm X, uh -huh. Denzel Washington. <laughs> but uh, he wins for Training Day. Yeah. You know, there's a and lot behind that. He wins for that movie, the body of work. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Exactly. But yeah, it's definitely a body of work moment. Oh, like, it's like, oh, we messed up. We should have done something. We should have done something. We're going to make it right on this one. And people are yeah. like, but why this one? Right. Um, so when we think about his his body of work, um, when we think about his um, commitment to the craft of acting, mm -hmm. um, because he's always learning, he's always studying, he was still um, very close um, with Sidney Poitier and others um, who a lot of them actually live down here now in Atlanta or, uh, you know, surrounding areas. Um, and then when we think about, um, you know, his work ethic and all that he gave to the, to the, the field. Um, you know, I just gotta say he is one of the greatest actors uh, of our time. Uh, he is iconic. Um, and the fact that he can perform the way that he did against um, our opposite of, yeah. Um, so many, I mean, stellar, stellar, stellar actors, um, directors, writers, producers, mm -hmm. um, is also a testament to the kind of artist he was. Yeah. So, um, you know, we're without further ado, we say congratulations, um, to Mr. Gossett for transitioning. If you talk to him, you know, he knows he's, he's doing something else right now, yeah. <laughs> um, but congratulations on a job well done. Yeah. Um, on doing uh, fantastic work, mm -hmm. um, on really leaving a legacy of artistry, activism, um, and excellence. Yeah. 
mm. not just black excellence, he would say that. Right. Um, but excellence, right. um, and uh, we will miss you. We will miss your performances. But luckily for us, through the uh, technology, we will have access to all of them. All um, for many years. How many 80? <laughs> Right, right. 482 yeah. uh, for many years to come. So thank you so much, um, Dr. Cunningham, for joining us. Yes. Hey, it was a pleasure. Um, we wish everyone a fantastic weekend. Watch some uh, Louis Gossett Jr. movies and television uh, shows if you can. Um, and have Watch a Enemy Mind. Huh? Watch Enemy Mind. Watch it. Watch Enemy Mind. Watch Enemy Mind. And watch Happen Leonard, which I think is an underrated yeah. show. Uh, he was great on it, as was Michael K. Williams. Um, so have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful weekend. And we'll see you soon.